I first performed this little show a decade ago uh, for an audience of maybe 20 people, mostly friends. I've performed it during presidential elections, Supreme Court hearings, marches and protests. Every time I walk out there, the world has changed. The world has certainly changed since Heidi Schreck first performed her Pulitzer Prize finalist and Tony-nominated play, What the Constitution Means to Me, or even since it was added to Amazon Prime in 2020. How much did you know about, say, the 25th Amendment before the Capitol insurrection? As a teenager, Heidi Schreck competed and racked up plenty of wins in a speech contest at American Legion halls across the country. She would talk about her own love of the Constitution. It's easy to imagine Heidi getting along great with Leslie Nope, the can-do, optimistic civil servant of Parks and Rec fame. In her mostly one-woman play, What the Constitution Means to Me, Shrek revisits those speeches as an adult in the Trump era and doesn't hesitate to explain all the ways that that document fails to protect women and people of colour. She talks about her own experience getting an abortion. The themes of her show are certainly worth revisiting now that the Supreme Court has put reproductive rights on the line. In the leaked draft opinion, Justice Alito specifically writes, we hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. The Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision. Perhaps Justice Alito needs to reread the Ninth Amendment or at least listen to this explainer from Heidi Schreck. I would like to tell you about the most magical and mysterious amendment of them all, Amendment 9. Amendment 9 says, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Do you know what that means? It means just because a certain right is not listed in the Constitution, it doesn't mean you don't have that right. The fact is, there was no way for the framers to put down every single right we have. I mean, the, the, the right to brush your teeth. Yes, you've got it. But how long do we want this document to be? And Heidi Schreck, playwright and actor behind what the Constitution means to me, joins me now. Heidi, thanks so much for coming on the show. You've performed this play in many different political climates. How does the renewed fight over Roe refresh the play's meaning and importance to you and to your audiences? Uh, well, you know, I started performing this play almost 15 years ago now, so it was a very different time. Um, and I, I will say that I just actually hoped that the play would get less and less relevant instead of more relevant. Um, so for me right now, I mean, honestly, I'm just so... Uh, filled with rage and uh, and really despairing about where we are headed. Uh, that it's it's hard for me honestly to think about the play. I am I think going to perform a benefit to raise money for abortion funds shortly, and I think it will be um, uh, difficult to bring uh, my teenage self. You know, the play starts with my hopeful teenage self, my 15 year old self at the beginning of the play, and I think it's going to be hard to find that. Um, that optimism and innocence I once had right now. And Heidi, as someone who spent a lifetime studying the Constitution, reading from it, what's your response to Justice Alito's argument that Roe and Casey must be overruled because, quote, the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision? Yes, well, a lot of smarter people than I am have said this better, but the Constitution, you know, also didn't include really most of us when it was written. It was written to preserve the power of uh, of white men who own property. And so most of us were actually left out of it. And if we were to go by the, the laws and cultural norms uh, that were in place at the time the Constitution was written, uh, most of us would be completely disenfranchised. So the... To me, the line of reasoning is specious. Um, we clearly uh, need to find a way to um, be in conversation with the present moment and not be living um, by the ideas that were put into place when most of us were so, not considered whole human beings. And that point you're making, a lot of people, a lot of women have been making that point in recent days, that 55 yeah. white guys wrote the Constitution over 200 years ago. Obviously, they didn't think about or care about women's views or women's reproductive freedoms. 
But once you go down that road, Heidi, and I think we should go down that road, by the way, we have to ask why 55 white guys from the 18th century should decide how we deal with a bunch of different things. I don't know, school shootings, other issues they never had to think about or care about. And I wonder whether we're on a good slippery slope. For those of us who do want to reevaluate a lot of stuff in the Constitution, I feel like this road decision might actually open up a lot of doors to discussing, well, how relevant are a lot of these things? How much of this does need to be updated? Uh, I, I agree. You know, I have a debate at the end of the show where we talk about uh, whether we should, uh, you know, and this is just a, a thought experiment, whether we should get rid of this document altogether and try to imagine something new and better. Obviously, I don't think that's a practical solution to the mess that we're in right now. Um, and I don't, I don't know how to address the slippery slope. The thing I do know is that we have to do whatever we can um, to protect people's human rights to protect people's civil rights. And that is not happening right now. It's not happening uh, with the attacks that are being made on trans rights. It's not happening with the attacks that are being made on the bodily autonomy of women and pregnant people. Um, we, Alito made it clear in his ruling that Obergefell, that the right to same-sex marriage is probably up for grabs. So, you know, this whole this leak can open up all sorts of huge questions about who we are as a country, um, what what we need yeah. to do, uh, to, you know, in the future. But I think right now the focus just has to be on people's human rights. I, I you know, I just gave birth to twins. My mother is here visiting. Congratulations. I'm Thank you very much. I'm a person who has had an abortion. I have had a miscarriage. I have had an ectopic pregnancy that almost killed me, and I have given birth. Of those four experiences, birth and uh, the miscarriages were the only ones that actually endangered my life. And I can't imagine having gone through those without trusting that my doctor would do everything they could in that situation to save my life. And I feel like now I have two daughters who are growing up in a world in which they cannot trust that a doctor will do everything they can to save their life. I feel like they're growing up in a world in which it could potentially be illegal for a doctor to look out for their life uh, in the situations I was in, giving birth, having an ectopic pregnancy. And that wow. terrified me. And I also was uh, this morning just talking to my mom about <laughs> it. I also can't believe I was so lucky to grow up under the protection of Roe and to grow up in a state that, Washington state that honored Roe. And I can't believe that I am here with my mother and my daughters who will not grow up with that same protection. It's absurd to me. It, it really is uh, crazy when you think about the timeline we're on in terms of uh, what people will now grow up with if this decision goes forward. One last question, Heidi, on a completely different subject. You spoke very powerfully there about abortion. Um, you were also a writer, I believe, on one of my favourite shows on the first season on Billions, uh, which is a show I absolutely adore. And I have to ask the question, back when it launched in 2016, um, you know, was it different to what it is now? It's become very, very political recently. And as a lefty, I'm very happy that it's become very political, targeting billionaires, the one percenters, very strong message. But I wonder when the show launched, was it written more as a celebration of kind of cool billionaires like Bobby Axelrod, who we see there on screen? Ah, uh, I mean, our room was pretty dominated by lefties <laughs> that first season. I think we were trying as writers <laughs> to uh, to look at all sides and to make him an interesting, complicated character. Um, but I, I think... I don't think the um, idea in the room was to celebrate him, no. Yeah, but it has become very interesting in terms of the, the recent storylines about uh, rich people taking over the economy, the country. I just find the whole thing fascinating. And I was excited when I saw uh, that you would have been involved in Billions as well. But your play uh, is fantastic. We're so glad that you could take time out for us. Congratulations on the twins, Heidi Shrek. Can I say one thing? Yes. Can I also just recommend that people watch My Name is Polly Murray on Amazon? If they're going to watch my show, and I hope they do, that Polly Murray was one of the greatest uh, lawyers, constitutional minds, um, fighters for racial and gender equality in our country. And it's an incredible story about how Polly used the 14th Amendment to argue Fantastic. that um, people should have the right to equality uh, in, in spite of gender or sex.